Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mike DeGoyer along with my cohort Brian Allen and together we manage about 280,000 clients here at Microsoft through a configuration manager. About nine months ago Brian and I started an endeavor to roll out configuration manager 2012. Uh, we started on 2007 R3 but today we're almost there. Brian and I have worked closely through that partnership in beta testing um, here at Microsoft. Yes, that's right, Mike. Uh, I'm Brian Allen, and I'm extremely excited to be here to share our experiences with you all. Um, we are excited to talk about Config Manager 2012 and our experiences and how we did it at Microsoft. Absolutely, and we have a lot of material to cover today, so let's jump into a, a couple things right off the bat. First of all, not everyone knows that Microsoft is one of the biggest pre-release product consumers there is today. So at Microsoft, we actually beta test and work on all of our software before it goes to you. Uh, with that, that's called dog fooding. Mm -hmm. And basically, we've had the honors of doing that across most of Microsoft. And actually, we'll talk a little bit later about how far we're at in that transition and some of the things we've done. Brian, tell me a little bit about our deployment efforts. Absolutely. Uh, the group I work in, MPSD, we're playing a very important role in the successful release of the product by providing critical feedback to the product team on the quality and usability of the product in real world scenarios. The whole point of dog fooling is to find these bugs and to validate the features of the product. Ultimately, our number one goal is just to simply ensure that we're finding these code defects, these bugs, long before any of our customers do. And I'm sure you agree with this, Mike. Ensuring higher Absolutely. product quality at RTM is number one, uh, number one of importance for us here at Microsoft. So we take that very seriously. We also have the opportunity and the advantage of using these features at a broad scale long before it's released to the public, and we're able to share our stories and experiences with you all as we're doing here today. Exactly. That's one of the best things, actually, I think about our job, Brian, is you think about we get to impact all of you and everyone in the world with how we provide direct feedback to the product. And that feedback is heard not only from us, but other customers that go directly into the product. So you guys manage a, a pretty broad base here at Microsoft, 280,000. Yep. So what was our de client deployment approach? We definitely manage a large, complex client base. And therefore, our primary migration method had to allow control of client clients and the timing of when these clients were being migrated. Of the many approaches and installation approaches we tossed around, and all of the methodologies will work. Software distribution, client push installation, all the traditional methodologies will work. We actually landed on the WSUS methodology as our client deployment approach. Okay. We leveraged security groups and GPOs as well because we wanted to control the timing of when these clients were moving. We wanted to make sure we were migrating these clients in a very controlled manner because we didn't want to impact any of our users. So, migrating clients with WSUS. Yes, sir. Awesome. So, how many clients are being managed in our 2007 infrastructure in terms of our implementation of 2012? Yep. In our Config Manager 2007 infrastructure, we had roughly 280,000 clients geo-distributed across five primary sites. When looking at how we were going to implement Config Manager 2012 in production, we targeted one of our bigger sites, which also happened to be in our region. That might be Redmond, eh? Absolutely. Uh, when we, once, the reason we targeted the Redmond site because one, it's in our region, we're here, and it's the largest site, so if we were going to impact anyone, we wanted to be close by to be able to... Uh, uh, Provide that support. Absolutely, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, when we, once we identified where we were gonna, what region we were gonna target, what site we were gonna target, we then identified the gaps, our operational pain points. We then researched the features of Configuration Manager 2012 to really understand how those pain points were being closed. We read all the documentation that was needed and then we were ready to start our designing of the, of the hierarchy. So we reviewed our current hardware, we compared it to our Config Manager 2012 hardware requirements, and from there we developed our migration plan, we designed the Config Manager 2012 infrastructure, and we were ready to start migrating clients. So how long did our planning take? Roughly the planning, uh, it just depends, but for us, it, 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 we were in planning for maybe 90 days. So about three months is probably a good time for yes. an enterprise to kind of lay out their plan and, and look at strategically how they want to implement Config, Ma Config Manager 2012. Yep. We're going to talk about why a little bit later because there's some details around SQL, replication, site matrix, et cetera, and we'll get to those bullet points later. So how many in 2012 are we doing today? 
Currently, right now, we are our goal is to migrate 200,000 clients at the RC1 milestone. Up on the screen is a look at our Config Manager 2012 hierarchy. As you can see, we currently have three primary sites. They're servicing 165,000 clients, and we are currently in the process of migrating our remaining Config Manager 2007 primary sites. That's our Europe and our APAC regions. And those sites have roughly 100,000 clients assigned to those, and we'll get those over to Config Manager 2012. This milestone, uh, but at least by RTM. That's a lot of clients to migrate. Indeed it is. <laughs> and to create a seamless experience. One of the things Brian and I have really been focused on is this uh, client change that we're implementing across the users, that 2012 migration. The key here is, is Brian's team has worked hard on a seamless migration, so clients really see no impact, no change in service, and the idea is to really hit the ground running from a 2012 or 2007 to 2012 migration strategy. So looking at the schedule, where are we at today? When are, when are we going to hit the big 200,000? So we expect to, um, we definitely are on track, and we expect to hit the 200,000 mark by end of December. Once we hit that mark, we, were, uh, we would have successfully migrated 200,000 clients in less than 90 days, folks. Awesome. That's good news. It's good to hear us making good progress. Yes. Yes, and that's, again, that's 200,000 clients in less than 90 days. So if your infrastructure is not that large, uh, I'm not saying it's going to be a piece of cake, but it should, it should be, be pretty seamless. That's one thing I think people should take away from this video is that our client migration strategy, really, we do do it in a phased approach, but it really has been seamless in terms of how we address the clients in groups of, say, 10, 20,000 by site, by region, et cetera. So enterprises can really strategically, if they just do a little good planning up front, yep. they can really make this a good, good uh, client experience. Absolutely. So what are some of the other key learnings that you've had in terms of over that deployment process. Yeah, let's talk about those. Uh, some of the things we've learned to date are, uh, one, and many may know or may not know, but there's a completely new approach to application management. With the introduction of the application model, there's gonna be an effect on the people, the processes, mm -hmm. the technology. Things are changing. We're moving to a, a user-centric, empowering user world. Um, and so we need to make sure that our support staff is ready. Folks need to make sure that end users understand what this shift really means because end users are now going to participate in their client management experience, and that's a complete shift. And that's something I'm helping Brian out with, even internally at Microsoft. The whole configuration manager user-centric change is a user experience yes. change. Yes. It's not just uh, CM managing the client in the background anymore. Now, clients have the option to work with power management, to work with security, to work with software Absolutely. updates and you can really control your experience, which is a very different thing uh, for here at Microsoft. Maybe in a managed environment, they, they don't have that problem, but here yeah. at Microsoft, we definitely, uh, as a development community, Folks we definitely empowered. allow people to empower them to make changes. What about the emphasis on compliance? Yeah, so uh, compliance and status management, they, the product group has definitely put more emphasis on that. Uh, formerly known as DCM, and now it's just compliance and status management, and really the, what, the key point of DCM or compliance and settings management in 2012 is that it now has a remediation functionality. Uh, for things of patch activities, we're actually using it for things such as patch activity and remediation. No longer will you have to go troubleshoot to figure out how to remediate these things. Now that the DCM baseline or compliance settings management, the actual feature, has that remediation functionality built into it, and it will remediate those activities for you. So that has been a huge improvement of productivity for our administrators. So your administrator can set your baseline, say this is what I want on my clients, and then basically have the, the CM manage itself. Monitor and manage itself. If, 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 if a user decides to change uh, settings on their system and the DCM baseline is set one way, mm -hmm. it'll remediate that and set it back to what the admin intended for it to be. That saves you a lot of time. Absolutely. A lot of troubleshooting. What about the uh, client health evaluator? We've heard a little bit about that. Yeah, we're really excited about the client, the new client health evaluator and the remediation functionality. Really what that is, is if a client is unhealthy, mm -hmm. previously in the past, if CCM exec was broken, uh, the client was just really unhealthy and you had to figure out how, if this client was online, if this client was offline. Now with the introduction of the new client health evaluator, CCM eval, it's a separate agent. And so now if the client is unhealthy, CCM eval knows and it can remediate that, that client's health. It can try to make that client back healthy. And that's extremely important in Configuration Manager 2012 with the new introduction of the application catalog. Mm -hmm. As you said, CM 
12 is not in the background anymore as it was in 2007. Users are now participating in this management experience. So if the client is unhealthy, folks are going to know about it now. And I'm happy to say that that actually, our metrics have improved over the life of this, what, uh, nine months. So as we've been deploying this through each milestone, we've seen increases in productivity, we've seen an increased number of clients, and we've actually seen the client health metrics increase exactly. to the point now where we can actually have a little more confidence in our software updates, our patching, uh, our ability to monitor, et cetera. Let's talk a little bit about uh, software updates. Yeah, so with software updates, there's a new introduction of ADR, which is the Auto Deployment Rule feature. And really what this allows us to do is, in the past, our administrators would take maybe four or five hours to getting ready for patch deployments. Now with the Auto Deployment Rule, it takes care of all that activity for them. They only have to spend 10, 15 minutes doing a QC <coughs> for those uh, packages and, and for to ensure that everything is of quality before they deploy it out to the to the world. So we went from five hours to 15 minutes. So you can see how that improved the efficiency and productivity of our administrators. And that helps with phasing, with scheduling, with managing things out in the future, especially when, say you want to set something out a month in advance or, or you have phases that you, you want to do like patch. You want to wait a week and let people get compliant. This kind of allows your administrators a little more free time so they don't have to go in and micromanage everything. So it's a very handy, handy yeah, change and, and time absolutely. saving. What about role-based administration? I've heard a lot about this. Yeah, this is kind of going hard to, to understand. Yeah, what, what, really what it role really means is role-based administration control. It allows and enables us to segment and delegate permissions and roles so that now admins only see what's really relevant to their role. So it removes the clutter from the console and you're also able to uh, segment who has what activities. In the past in Configuration Manager 2007, if you were an administrator, you saw everything and, and that's, that's really not what administrators want to see. They don't want to see the clutter. They want to see what's relevant to them. Also, from a security perspective, mm -hmm. no longer are folks able to make mistakes and do things that they're not supposed to be doing because now they only have access to what's relevant to them and their roles. So that's been a, a, a huge benefit for us, and I expect that to be a huge benefit for, for folks who adopt Configuration Manager 2012. So enterpri enterprises are going to have the ability for the left hand to not necessarily step on the right hand. You can have deployment as one role. Yes. You can have operations as another role. You can have security seeing data or interacting with it in a different role. Yes. So it really gives you a granular control on the back end for how CM really distributes that access across your enterprise, your operational structure, whatever it may be for different people. What about migration tools? Let, let's talk, touch base on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so last but not least, uh, the migration tool really is a feature that's going to allow folks to migrate their Config Manager 2007 infrastructure seamlessly to Configuration Manager 2012. Really what it does is you map your Configuration Manager 2007 environment mm -hmm. to your Configuration Manager 2012 environment and you're able to migrate those objects over to your Config Manager 2012 environment. You can also migrate clients uh, in the middle of this process and there's those clients, because you've established that relationship between both hierarchies, the clients are still able to get their content from your Configuration Manager 2007 site, although they have been migrated to Configuration Manager 2012. So that allows you to control the timing uh, uh, of how you're gonna migrate clients while not interrupting any uh, activities or uh, interrupting productivity of uh, end users. So mm -hmm. that kind of talks a little about the, the impact, right? We've, we've, we're in the process of migrating 280,000 people, not, not a small task by any means. No. Uh, we're close to 200,000. We're getting there in December. Absolutely. Awesome. So what, what is our help desk? What's, what are the support impacts? How much is this costing us? Yeah, strangely enough, Mike, and I wouldn't say strangely enough because I'm not actually shocked because it's been a pretty smooth ride, I must say. But actually, we've had very minimal impact to our help desk. Uh, the help desk calls, as it pertains to our 2012 infrastructure, uh, we're averaging less than 1% help desk calls per month. So not a huge impact on the help desk. They seem to be pretty happy, and we're pretty happy. That said, the transition to user-centric does require a mindset change, as you said earlier. It's more than just a feature set. It's a complete change in, in thinking and, and how IT pros are going to uh, manage their user base. No longer are IT pros gonna have control of their environment. Now they have to balance the 
control versus end user mm -hmm. empowerment and have a, a happy medium there. Uh, but all in all, it's been a pretty good experience and we expect it to be a to remain a good experience for the help desk because we're fully Absolutely. committed to educating our users, to updating our processes, to ensure that folks are ready for this shift to user-centric. And that's something Brian and I are actually working on right now is that whole user uh, education, if you will. So even at Microsoft, we're focused here on let's get that information to the user and empower them so that they can do things like control their software experience, maybe have a little more control in their patch experience, a little more control of to when they reboot with limited variation, of course. And also, when we talk about control, I don't want to scare folks. It, it, it's, it's still based on admin intent. So if the admin does not want to provide that control to users, they don't necessarily have to. It's really up to the corporations on how they want to drive to user-centric or even if they want to drive to user-centric. So the admins are able to override anything that the user does on their machine. Mm -hmm. So if the admin intends on someone to get a piece of software, they will get that software uh, if that's intended. So Absolutely. we, I want folks to know that admins does have a right to override user. So you got a, a fairly good breadth of flexibility there in CM for, for what you can limit and how you do it in your environment. That's definitely been asked in the past. If users are able to control yes. things, are we able to overwrite? Yes, you are. So. That's a good question to answer. Maybe a, a little little nugget there. What about our RTM plans for deployment? How are we going to scale this? What, what are our final kind of pieces here? Yeah, our RTM goals and targets are pretty simple, Mike. Uh, at RTM, we will be fully migrated, 280,000 clients to Configuration Manager 2012. Right now, we are gearing up for that and are in the process of solidifying our RTM migration plans. We hope to have that done in the next couple of weeks, and we'll be ready to deploy RTM once it's released. And we have a lot of features coming in 2012. Brian and I thank you for your time, and we're definitely looking forward to seeing you next time.